Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again, not truly alone, not with the bucket around. All right, what are we gonna do this time with the bucket? So many endings. This was not the correct way to the Suicide. meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket. The bucket will him, save me, telling him that the employee lounge was simply. I can the use the bucket as a parachute. Be. It'll catch and the air, was, and I will float to safety, to be correct, and we will well, survive. Then, never mind. The bucket was wrong. We will survive. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. <laughs> Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere <gasps> else. That's no the way! Lift. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. I knew it! You can go down! Oh, suicide first, though. That's what we're here for. But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, yes. his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. Never let go. How deeply touching. Never let go, Jack. Okay. <laughs> now I got a food. Hello. This is a recorded message scheduled either by you or a person in your oh, place of work. Really? The purpose of this message is to warn you about the dangers of recorded messages. Oh. If at any time you believe you are listening to a recorded message, please terminate it immediately. And cease all flow of information from the recorded message into your perceptual sphere. Gosh, that's scary. Thank you, and have a pleasant day. God, that's terrifying. Recorded messages, guys. Maybe I should answer the phone more often. Bucket. The good old bucket. The good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket. Off on another thrilling adventure together. Stanley took the bucket with him into this little hallway <laughs> and closed the door. I did. This How was observant. This out. No one would ever find them here. Of course, no one would ever find them anyway because everyone was missing. But Stanley chose to ignore <laughs> this fact and instead focus on how cool the hideout it is cool as a was. ladder. Just him and the bucket, two renegade heroes against the world, inside their secret, undetectable hideout. Here, next to room 417. It is undetectable. What a treat. Ah. Uh. Ah. No, apparently not. I gotta do the button heaven with the bucket. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Mm. Go to the cargo lift. Mm. <gasps> the collectibles! You found one of them. Wow! The miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting I didn't even know. These, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't wow. buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. Two out of so, six. I implore you to savor each and every moment I'm you savoring. come across one of these beautiful figurines. They are beautiful. Give me the merch. Ugh. If I drop, I'm definitely dead. So we're going to take the vent. It's calling me. Crawling. Ah! Ugh. What is this office? It's like all white. Oh god. This is dark. Narrator dialogue. There's so much to hear. Another serious table. Oh. Okay. This is day number 295. Tape number. I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. Ooh. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. Evidence? And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still 
haven't figured out why I see the world I wish so I had a bucket differently when this bucket is sounds in like holding my buckets arms. improves your mood by a lot why everything feels so what do I do with this treasure I can <laughs> I can monetize it. <laughs> monetize the bucket. Yes. yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. <laughs> this is my golden ticket. My but I have to be careful. Because <laughs> as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? It's the bucket. <gasps> Camarada. Oh, wow. Didn't they say in one of the other endings there was a wizard or something? that turned the bucket and the wizard's name was something like that? Is there like some kind of branching storyline? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed the The Green Finders Committee? Oh! Well, you gotta go to the meeting room then. Where are we going today, the bucket asked. The meeting Stanley room! just smile. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. The meeting room is where we're going. Because there's a figurine finder's Stanley meeting. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Ooh. The screen color changed. Bottom text. How can we find them? What we know, a small floating objects have appeared across the office. We have to synergize our resources to ensure the retrieval. There are many questions. There is no memo from management. Agenda. How can you tell me you spotted one? What makes them float in the air? Who took these pictures of them? Oh, there's one in the bathroom. Good to know. Fig leaves are hard to find. Follow clues provided by employee 416. We can do it. Red room? Red room, huh? Thank you, and good luck. What? <laughs> They changed the boards. Ooh. There will be a reward for finding them all. <laughs> Source of levitation. For whom to whom it may concern. It manages to pick up sounds unusual to our regular office ambiences or local audio sources using an array of cardioid microphones, also known as directional mics, a mic which can pick up sound from a particular area. Analysis of the recordings allowed me to triangulate the source of the strange noise. Data shows that in all likelihood it's coming from a dark area behind a very warm place. I also picked up what looks to be reverberants off of porcelain surface. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? Shut the frick up. <laughs> Maybe we are the collectibles. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. Weird spinning figures. Can we sell them? Obviously. More money if sold together. How many are there? Why are they floating? Magnets. It's always magnets, O'Neill. Artist rendering. Why do they look like employee 427? Should we make them... Interns, I think? I can't quite read that one. What do they want? Our data. Stock options. Money. Saw one in cargo room. Play 421 building a bridge. Oh, thank you. I got that one. Do we need contracts for them? Potential liability. Not disclosure agreement. Bonus stuff. What we don't know yet, what we know, what we forgot. <laughs> Why wouldn't they just tell us something will happen? This investigation, this room, they feel pointless. Trust the completionist instinct. <laughs> oh my god. What does it say? 
Figuring fight. This is insane. I can't read any of that. Sadness. Beware the false prophet collecting a sexy. Oh! There's actually a checklist! Place of the search, mission status. Looks like 427. Five there be, just take it from me. Gotta collect them all. Is this some kind of game? There must be a point to this. We have, inside of the sequel exhibit, we have the large room. Stairs. Something to do with stairs. Somewhere red and blue, near a fireplace, and a private but smelly place for an important person. Warehouse access plan. We need more planks. Oh! Secret door? Don't mind if I do. Bathroom. A room with the fireplace. So there's something to do under the stairs in Mariella's ending. Produce one plank to allow ease of access past fence. Construct a bridge to allow collection of sunny air. Retrieve Chris's remains? Oh no. Construct a new structurally sound bridge. Stop kidding yourselves. I want them so much. I want to go home. <laughs> there will be cleaning of this wall required. Who are you? <laughs> Eyes. Wow. I like the color change. I also like the broom closet. Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? Yes. The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear it as day. This here. broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom yes. closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning it supplies. Is. Good for you. There's a spot right there. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. I am this strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply God. in order to get you to hand over this the broom bucket? closet is so rude. Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons. But even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting what? friends. We are friends. That your relationship is purely superficial and confused. You know how many endings I have survived with this so bucket? Banal and half and meaningless of died. That you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? <laughs> well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket I have. have shared together. We, Go through we survived point, the explosion point, point. of a Share your villainous machine. Detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket. I and did accidentally kill it that one time. Over the years. Let him have it. You fuck. <laughs> uh, I'll let him have the bucket. Here you go. <laughs> Anything else? Okay. I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. <laughs> there. Now it's settled. Perfect. No more debate. No more discussion. <laughs> Take a hike, broom closet. Yeah, with all your fuck meandering off. philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. Yeah. This is my bucket now. All right, I've got a second sticker back second here, sticker? and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. What does it say? A bucket. See? <laughs> I feel that it works because the sticker is also a bucket. It's bucket section. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say I to yourself, I also like that the sticker oh, goes under the previous it's a sticker. Bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. How many stickers can I get on my bucket? Can I have another sticker? I'm just here for the stickers, and the broom closet agrees with me. We're just here for stickers now. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us the silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies, 
easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. Okay. Nope, he's literally just done. So there's one downstairs, huh? Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. I gotta wonder what's down here, though. Oh. Another miniature Stanley figurine. I knew it was this, here. Um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley I'm a stan. <laughs> what about Stanlerines? Stan yes, I think I like that. No. Another Stanlerine under no, your that's belt. that's awful. That's an awful name. Wah. I'm really curious what they do to this ending. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. Is there no secret then, stuff for this? Something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his nope, arms. It's new. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze but said nothing at all. Well, that's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. Did my bucket break? And that's Too many Stanley stickers? Realized, this isn't my bucket. It's <gasps> just a normal, everyday bucket. The broom someone closet stole my bucket! How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come Ugh. from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. The broom closet now stole he my bucket! The rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Uh. Oh, gracious, he exclaimed. Oh, gracious. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley! I'm Stanley, coming! I'm the elevator's locked! The bucket! Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by I'm one coming. bucket after the next. None of them were his. Oh my God! None of them were his special Buckets. bucket. Come to me, Stanley! Find Buckets! Me. He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. Buckets. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, it froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. <laughs> Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. The bucket was inside of me. That's painful. I ate my bucket. The broom closet the made me eat my bucket. Named Mariella. Mariella. Okay, what do you got? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose got dressed, picked up her bucket <laughs> of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. <laughs> She's holding a bucket. On this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. I didn't this have a bucket. This man had no bucket. Yeah. Of course he'd gone mad ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game it could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him perhaps he did this is considerably more forced wall breaking than the original at home in the first place how cruel the world can be mary thought and she hugged her own bucket even tighter but of course she had no time for this there were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself. <laughs> my life kicks ass. Heck yes, my life kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> that ending was so much funnier. Oh, that was like a really serious ending in the original. Oh my god, I, there's so much content.